Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, we showed you how to upload your cleaned up sales data to Mango and how to add supplemental layers to your map. We also showed you a, a few small styling tricks such as how to customize the pop-up window that's displayed uh, when we click on an individual county. And we also showed you how to add supplemental layers and supplemental layer groups which can be turned on and off in the legend. Now the last thing that we need to add to this map is the location of our current dealerships. Now, if you remember the original spreadsheet, you'll remember that we don't actually have the coordinates for each of these dealership locations. All we have is the address. So what I'm gonna be showing you in this video is how we can use QGIS to do a process called geocoding in order to get the lack long coordinates for each one of these individual locations. Once again, we're gonna do that using QGIS. So in QGIS, in order to do geocoding, you need to install a plugin called MMQGIS. Now to install a plugin in QGIS, you click on plugins and press manage and install plugins. Now QGIS out of the box when you first install it has all of the basic functionality that you need for GIS, but it also has a rich uh, and very vast plugin library that allows you to do a lot of additional things. So. Once you've opened up the plugin library, we need to search for MMQGIS. You'll click on that. Now in my version of QGIS, it's already installed, but in yours, you'll click an install button down the bottom here, and then it will install the plugin. Once you've installed the plugin, click on the M MMQGIS uh, menu at the top, click geocode, and then choose geocode CSV with Google or OpenStreetMap. Once that's opened, it's going to ask you uh, for the location of your CSV file. Now remember, CSV stands for comma separated value, um, and you will need to save your spreadsheet in Excel or OpenOffice as a CSV before you can work with it in QGIS. So I'm gonna go to my data. and I'm gonna select the dealership spreadsheet. Now what will happen is QGIS will automatically try and identify columns within the data that contain address and location information. So we can see here that automatically it's decided that the address field is the street address column, the city field is the city column from our data, and the state field uh, would be state, and country field is none. Okay, so that's what we have in our data right now. So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna press uh, the OK button and it will save um, a new shapefile data set, hopefully with all of those addresses geocoded. Okay, and it's gonna save it in the same location as the spreadsheet. What it's also going to create is a not found CSV. Now what will happen sometimes is you will geocode your CSV and some of the addresses won't be located in uh, the geocoding database. All of these locations will be add to the, added to the not found CSV. What you'll need to do in those cases is possibly go and double check the address, make sure it's keyed in correctly, um, and then try and run the geocode again. The other option that we have in here is whether to use Google Maps or OpenStreetMaps. Now Google Maps is far more accurate um, especially in locations outside of the US. So it gives extremely good results for the geocoding. Um, what tends to happen, OpenStreetMap will have far more uh, not found uh, addresses. Now the drawback with the Google Maps geocoding service is it only allows you to perform 2,000 geocodes per day. So if you need to geocode a data set that's larger than 2,000 records, you're either going to need to break that spreadsheet up into separate spreadsheets of 2,000 each, and you'll have to um, geocode those spreadsheets on sequential days, or if you open QGIS on a separate computer, then you'll also be able to do 2,000 on that computer. Okay, so the output shapefile, we're gonna save it in our desktop in data. Okay, and we're gonna call this shapefile dealerships. So let's press save and let's press run. Now in the bottom left corner, you'll see how many geocodes have been completed already. 
The geocoder completes around one geocode per second. So when we're geocoding a very small spreadsheet like this with only seven records, it happens very quickly. If you're downloading larger data sets with thousands of records, um, then I advise you to go away, make a cup of tea or coffee, and then come back in 30 minutes, and it should be done. Now we can see out of here that we have seven of seven uh, addresses geocoded with Google Maps successfully. And we'll see that it's now added them to the map as a shapefile. So the shapefile is now called dealership SHP. So now that we have that data, we can now upload it to our map in Mango. So let's go back to the Mango Map Administration panel. So here's the map that we built previously. And now we're gonna upload um, our dealerships to the map. So once again, we click on layers, press add layer. We're gonna add a new layer. Now let's add those dealerships. So we're gonna add the DBF, the PRJ, the SHP, and the SHX, and press open. And then Mango Map will uh, begin the upload. Let's just capitalize this layer name and we'll press the save button to add it to the map. Okay, so now those dealerships have been added to the map. As soon as you add a new layer to Mango, it always drops you straight into the layer settings. Okay, just for the purpose uh, of this video, I'm just gonna close that a second, just to show you that the dealerships have been added to the map. Now what's happened is when you add a new layer or you upload a new data set, it will always add it to the top layer group. Um, this layer group is off by default, so what we actually want to do is we want to put those dealerships in their own layer group so we can turn them off individually in the legend. And unlike the supplemental layers of the population and the median household income, we actually want these de uh, dealerships to show up by default when the map's first loaded. So we're just going to click the checkbox that says layer group visible on map load. Okay, so there we have it, we have the dealerships. So let's go ahead and let's change the styling of those uh, dealership locations. Um, let's match the styling of our sample map that I showed you at the beginning of the video series. So let's go for a green dot uh, with a gray outline and uh, let's add some labels. So when we zoom into those locations, we can actually see the label information and know which dealership we're looking at. So to do that, we go into the layers for dealerships, we press the settings button. Let's change the color to a green. Let's change the outline to a dark gray. And let's add some labels. So we turn the labels on. It's already selected the name. We want to label the name column. Um, let's go for white text with a black halo. Okay, and let's also go ahead and configure the pop-up. Uh, let's use a custom pop-up like we did on the sales data layer. Uh, we're gonna use the name of the dealership for the main column. And what we really want here is we just wanna show the address information for this particular location. So we'll just show street address. And then on the next line, we'll show city state and the zip code and then let's delete all of the information down here I don't think we need anything else let's press save and we press save again And now we have those green dealership locations uh, displayed on the map. And when we click on a dealership location, we can see our customized pop-up that will just have the name of the dealership location and the address. Okay, and we can see here, because we clicked on two features, we clicked on the dealership and there's a county below it, we can see multiple features selected. If we press this right arrow here, it will show the information for the county that's below. So there we have it, a completed interactive web mapping application that's ready to share with the public or other people inside your organization. 
Now, there are lots of other things that you could add to this map. You can go inside the toolbox to choose from the large library of tools that are available in Mango. You can change the branding of the interface to add your logo and match the color scheme um, of your company. You can also uh, create teams and invite other users in to uh, interact with this map and also to contribute. All of those things are covered in our documentation and also covered in other video series that are produced by Mango. So in this course, you learned how to find and download data. You learned how to join a spreadsheet to map data using QGIS. In QGIS, you learned how to clean up your map data, how to delete columns and how to delete uh, unwanted features. And you also learned how to geocode addresses using QGIS. Hopefully this video course has given you the foundation of skills that you need in order to take all of your business data and spreadsheet data and turn them into powerful web mapping applications.